I have no idea what it is. Whoa, Ricky, <laughs> what you got here, buddy? Uh, well, that's a tiger moth for sure. Leopard but this moth. This one, yeah. and this one, I don't know. That looks like a salt marsh. They're on the same plant? Nope. Willow. Willow. And this one's supposed to eat willow, but it's not on willow. Well, know. that that thing will eat just about anything. That's the giant leopard moth. Right. Is That'll it? eat anything. Okay. But this that, one, what do you think it is? That that's definitely a uh, acria, the um, salt marsh moth, tiger moth. Hmm. Really? So you got yeah, you got two different species of uh, of tiger, moth. tiger moths. That's awesome. <laughs> Very good. Well, yes, sir. here we go. That's a good way hey, to start the morning. Beautiful day to good, start. Good the morning. way to start the day, Dad. You see well, any? If, if you guys don't know, I raised one of these things for science. It was a little tiny one. I found it like this big. <laughs> it was like this big. It took me about three months to get it this big. It, beca it became a cocoon, um, a chrysalis. Yeah. And I dropped it. Dropped and it killed. It killed. <laughs> so this one. Redemption. Is like a little, a redemption is yeah, my that's baby. Like, that's right a, now. now that's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah. Now be careful. These guys will jump off. So. Make yeah. sure you don't make sure they don't fall. Okay, I got to Bueno, Rough very bueno. Start. <laughs> Muy bueno. All right, very two bueno. two arctiads in the pot. Let's go. All right, so we're we're hunting for <laughs> moths. What? Is there another one there? Look at that. That thing is huge. That. That's a big poop. Yeah, man. Look at that. I gotta be brother and sister or something like that. <laughs> that have Look to at be. that. Those are some big tiger moths, caterpillars there. Good stuff, man. All right. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Man, oh man. So, all right, guys, check these uh, Astigma acrea caterpillars out. These are salt marsh tiger moths, and they are like super cute fuzzy little guy. that was embarrassing okay so they're super cute and i'm just gonna pick them up uh, a lot of people are worried about picking up caterpillars well look at them go look at them go where are you going buddy dude where are you going where are you going <laughs> where, where where are you going stay yeah, so people are worried about picking up fuzzy caterpillars. And as a rule of thumb, it's probably smart not to go picking up caterpillars, especially if you don't know whether or not they are harmful to you or whether they can sting, because there are some very painful caterpillars if you pick them up, including the io moth and the buck moth caterpillars and the pus moth. You don't want to pick those guys up. So if you don't know what they are, it's probably a good rule of thumb not to pick them up, especially if they've got thorn spines or hairs like this that could be urticating and would annoy the skin. Um, but um, I know what they are. These hairs are just very harmless hairs and they come in different color forms too. They got this orange color form here. They got big red. I'll call you big red. Um, and I'm going to put them in the container now this guy's crawling up <sighs> okay um they should be pretty close to full grown um we found them on three different types of plants we found them on sweet clover we found them on elder weed or elderberry not elderberry elder weed common elder and we found them on willow and the one that's easiest for me to get is willow so i went and i found a plant close to my house. I cut a few sprigs of willow and now I've got, um, I'm going to put these in here and hopefully they will take to it. I do know where to get the elderberry if I need to, but hopefully my acria uh, salt marsh tiger moth caterpillars will begin chowing down on the willow leaves and uh, make my rearing of this species super, super easy because I got willow everywhere. So, all right guys, let's Come tune in tomorrow and see uh, if these guys start eating the willow leaves. All right, so it's time. It's been two days. I'm going to check my uh, tiger moth caterpillars here. They're looking good. Is this guy starting to make his cocoon? No. I got to change out this uh, paper towel and change out the uh, host plant because they're going to town here. 
Um, actually surprised I didn't eat all of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and change this out. Get a new liner in there. And um, they're looking healthy and good. Now, I wonder how many parasites will come out of these three. We'll see, but I got um, plenty of fresh willow that I cut for them. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add this to our, to our container. And that should, that should keep us for another day or two. And we're gonna go for there. So um, hopefully they pupate soon. I don't wanna feel like raising these things and feeding them for a long time, but Arteids can actually take a while so it's a little bit of a challenge. So we'll see. Sorry. All right, Josh, what are you looking at here, buddy? A caterpillar. A caterpillar? I want to hold it. You want to hold it? You know that you should never touch fuzzy caterpillars in the wild, right? Because they might sting. But, but these don't, right? These ones don't. But never touch caterpillars without somebody there to tell you which one stings and which one doesn't. This one doesn't sting. He's just got big fuzzy hairs on him. Can I pick it up? Very gently, yes. He's moving. Here, why don't you do this? Let me... Just put your finger in front of Watch me. this. Open your hands. Put your hands out. Oh, there you go. What do you think? Good. You like it? Yeah. You want to name him? Uh, Fred. Fred! <laughs> Fred! What's up, Fred? He looks like a Fred. Fred the furry. F furry Fred. <laughs> furry Fred. That's awesome. The the pinchy things like make him grip to stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like his little legs in the front. That's what he holds on with. And he uses all of his little hairs to feel. So if you have a hair and it touches the leaf, if, if something t else touches the leaf, his hair feels it and knows that maybe it's time to hide because there might be something coming to eat me. So the hairs help them feel things. <laughs> He's a hairy dude, huh? He needs a haircut. He does need a haircut. Oh, Fred. Maybe we'll bring Fred to the Caterpillar Barber. <laughs> cool. Well... Want to put him back? Yes. All right, let's let Fred go back and eat. Let's just... Man, those legs stink like crazy. Yep, yeah. oh. oh, there he goes. Cool. Pretty cool. Well, do you like caterpillars, Josh? Yes. Caterpillars are the best. I absolutely love caterpillars. Rock on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that it's been... It's been some time since my uh, salt marsh moth caterpillars have pupated. And what I wanted to do is you always give it a few days before you go into the container and make sure that before you go disturbing things, that they are actually fully pupated. You don't want to disturb them halfway through. So, um, so what I'm doing is now I'm going to pull these guys out and we are going to examine the pupa. And one of the things you can see what they do they actually take the hairs from their from when they were a caterpillar and they make a cocoon out of their caterpillar hairs, which is pretty cool because this caterpillar was orange and this one was gray and they, <laughs> they, they have different color cocoons. So that's pretty cool. Um, what I'm hoping is, I'm hoping that there are not any parasites in any of these. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna open them up and just take a look and see. I've got three cocoons for sure. So I'm gonna pull one off and I'm gonna put it there. Some of our kids actually have cocoon here. The hairs on them actually are urticating, which is Tussock moths are pretty weird, they actually have urticating hairs on their cocoons. All right, so we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two cocoons, and then there's a third one here. So I had three caterpillars, so if I get three cocoons out of three caterpillars, or three viable pupa out of three caterpillars, that would be special. Now, what we're hoping is, I'm hoping that there's no parasites, because these guys have a very high level of parasite. Let me make sure there's nothing in the paper towel before I dump this out. Oh, it looks good. Looks good. So I'm going to dump this out. Now I've got my containers fresh, and I'm actually going to wind up putting these in a cup uh, and see what's going on. So I'm going to open these up and make sure that the, the cocoons, are, the chrysalis are viable, that there's not parasites in them, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys. Now, good news. Three out of three. That is very impressive. I beat, I'll beat all the odds there. Ricky actually got some parasites in the, in the caterpillars that he took home. So I actually got three out of three that made their cocoon or made their viable chrysalis inside their cocoon, which is very, very unheard of. Um, now, I can't wait to tell. Let's see, I wonder if you can tell It's a male or female from this. It doesn't I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe you can. Uh, I'm. I'm not sure, guys. How to tell the some of some species you can actually tell the difference between male and female in the cocoon. Um, I'm not sure if that applies to arctids or not. I'm gonna have to do some research, but. Uh, as they look, they look about the same size. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to place all of them in a cup, 16 ounce cup, and it's got a little paper towel ramp in it. And I'll explain why I do that in a minute. So, guys are so good. Pulled him out. Now I've got three chrysalis in the cup. Then the reason we put the paper towel ramp is so when they emerge, they have something to crawl up on because they need to hang in order to dry their wings. And then also what I do is I put a piece of paper towel on the top and your lid snaps on top of the paper towel and voila, you have your pupa ready to go. Now it's just a waiting game and see how long it takes for them to emerge. Sounds good guys, three for three, I'm super excited. We got, so far we're 100% success rate. I got great news, guys. We have a salt marsh moth emerged. So I'm going to see if we can get a good close up of this pretty, pretty moth. And it looks like. Oh, wow. Look at that. It looks like. Let me see if I can get. Don't tell my wife I'm gonna use a fork here for a second. It looks like it's a male. Yeah, the males have oh starting to, dude starting to crawl. Oh, he just spewed out his <laughs> his uh Marconium, that stuff that he just spit out there, guys, uh, if you didn't know, every butterfly and moth will do that after they emerge from their chrysalis. Inside of the abdomen of the butterfly or moth is the metabolized, it's actually kind of like poo, <laughs> that they store fat as a caterpillar so that when they're in their chrysalis, they have something to eat and, then, and live off of. And that's the metabolized stuff. They store it, and as soon as they emerge... They let it pop out. So let's see if we can get you to open up your hind wings. Show everybody the difference between a male and a female salt marsh moth. All right. Well, he's being super stubborn. Are you going to show us your hind wings here, buddy? My goodness. Uh... Let's see, let's try again. Open. That's a yellow, the yellow abdomen. 
he does not want to show his hind wing at all. I wonder why. It's not what they do. They're very, what's the word? They don't show off their stuff. They're modest. Oh, you don't sit upside down, dude? You play dead? Okay, let's see. Well, trust me, this is a male and it's got orange hind wings. But let's see if I can, there we go. It's got like this yellowish orange hind wing here. All right, guys, that's the male hind wing. Females have just a white hind wing. So I'm excited because we have a salt marsh tiger moth perfectly emerged from its chrysalis. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen one of these. What a beauty. Um, very grateful. And um, hopefully we have, we actually have two more pupa and hopefully one of these two in this cup here will be a female. That, that looks like a girl, the one on the right. I'll bet that's a girl. So uh, guys, let's see if one turns out to be a female. We're gonna wait and see if they emerge. Cool. All right, so pretty cool thing that we just witnessed. I was photographing uh, this male tiger moth with my Canon camera. And as I was trying to get it to crawl onto this leaf and disturbed it, it, it actually went into some sort of defensive posture. Let's see if I can get it to do it again. Let's see. Oh, now he doesn't want to show off. He did it. Oh my. Oh, that's not, that didn't work out. All right, let's see. Okay, go back on your leaf. You gonna open up? No. Well. <laughs> He's gonna be a little punk. He's not gonna reveal his hind wing. He did before. He actually did pretty cool. It's like, there we go. He popped his hind wing open and uh, he, he actually erected his wings open pretty far above their head, almost like a, butterf like a butterfly would sit. Um, Oh, he's starting to get active now. I mean, he might start, he might fly. If I give him a little extra, little extra love. <laughs> Come on, tiger moth. Yeah, there, little, little tiger. There we go. Well, he just wants to be left alone. I'm going to leave him alone. What a cute little dude. So grateful I got to see this guy. All right, he finally did it. He opened up, guys. That's what he was doing before. I just put him down. And he opens up his wings, kind of like a butterfly would sit, and sits in this defensive posture, almost like he's trying to show off his orange colors, like maybe because they're warning colors or something like that. And he only sits like that for a few seconds, and then he goes back to his regular moth position. Uh, but I'm super jacked that I get to see that. Get to learn about my little moth a little bit better than I did. Knew more about this species than I did a few minutes ago, that's for sure. Instead of trying to fly away, they play dead. <laughs> oh, 
pretty mall.